so that I be I be one of the speakers today. I hope I'm audible. I believe I am. Yes, you are, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right. So my topic today is talking about leadership, especially for women. As she has already given a brief background of who I am, I am a founder of Kuala Christian Organization. It's a Christian organization that seeks to empower, motivate, and inspire young girls in different sectors of life, in their Christian work, in their education, in their health, in their everyday life. But also, I am I work. I actually have two jobs currently. I work as a head of department for computer science department at Millennium University. And I also work at British Council as an invigorator and supervisor. So for all those writing IELTS exams, um, SIPs, SCCA, and all of those exams that are written under British Council. And also I am a business woman. I sell a number of products. I make some of the products. I, I make um, chili sauce, which is known as doxa. I also sell um, different products, perfumes, um, home deco, and all of those things. So um, at heart, I am a born again Christian to wrap it up. So I believe that each and every one of us has a purpose in life. And in one way or another, we're going to find ourselves in leadership positions. Why I say this? Because everyone has potential or is born to be a leader. This means that when we talk about leaders, we mean that someone who can influence others. And sometimes others are given a bigger platform to inspire and influence other people, while others have everyday chores in which they can influence other people so everyone at heart is a leader that means maybe the way you dress can influence another person to say oh i think i'd like to aspire to dress like that and in that way you're a leader or in other bigger ways like i am i have to um head a department where i have a number of people under me that um that report to me and all of those things so at also that level i'm a leader but if i go back to say maybe where i am at my home i'm married i can't say i'm a leader my, i look up to someone else who is my leader so as a person you have to understand and to know different roles in your life where you're a leader and where you're a follower at the same time what are some of the things that you need to do in order to lead especially if you are a female so for me um leadership is basically about influence what do you do with that influence that you have you know this is how i'm able to change people's mindset on this particular topic or i'm able to motivate people in this particular um, project or um, people are able to change the way they do certain things in this particular way. That's leadership. You should be able to know how do I do this? How do people respond or how do people react? And what more can I do and give to them as a leader? That's pretty much leadership influence. Now, if we talk about some of the strategies on how you can become an effective leader, in the area of expertise is there are many areas and the reason why maybe i didn't bring out a ppt is because i want to speak from experience and speak speak from how i have been able to do so the first one is having confidence in yourself most people generally it doesn't this doesn't even depend on gender it's and it's an inborn thing where sometimes you have to be self-aware and know who you are, what you carry, and how you impact lives for other people. So you have to be self-aware. At the same time, you have to build confidence. 
that means for sure you know that this is what I'm really good at. I can be able to sell this thing, whatever I have, to another person. So you move on um, in your level of confidence from one stage to another. The other thing is you have to be able to communicate. Communication is very vital. As as much as in as much as we talk about communication and we know how um communication plays a big role in some of the decisions we make because um communication comes in different ways the way you're going to be able to say hi to another person or just the normal greeting you can say hi to this person you can say hi to another person but these two people will have a different story of how you communicated to them so maybe one person you just said hi while you were looking away and you were doing other things the other the other person maybe you are you, you are you are on your phone while you were talking to them or the other person you engaged with them and you were able to understand different aspects of your life so communication has a very vital role in how you become a leader or who you are as a leader you have to be able to speak out your mind without offending others but at the same time being an active listener being engaged and making sure that people understand what you, what are you what are you what do you want to to inform others about and what feedback can you get from that so those three things being self-aware um being confident um as well as having good communication skill the other thing of being an effective leader is um representing yourself very well that means putting yourself um out today in places where you know or positioning yourself in places where you know that people know you are a leader that's also part of being an effective communicate effective leader um the more this is in line with being or being confident because you have to be able to know that i am a leader this is my area of expertise but if you don't have anyone following you then you're not a leader or if you don't have anyone reaching out to you and saying oh i heard you do this or how 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 can you help me on this particular thing in this particular thing it will only help you to position yourself in areas of where they can reach you and this comes in a time where i know we are all conversant with how the digital world is going we have different different platforms that you can associate yourself with and show yourself that this is how best i can meet other people so you can use platforms like linkedin you can use facebook you can use twitter you can use or x or you can use tiktok places where you know that people can reach out to you and you are constantly representing yourself that means you're showing yourself that this is the work that I that I do and people are able to know that um this is the things that you do so the, that's another thing of being an effective leader another thing is because you're a leader you deal with a lot of people and so it requires you to have um different soft skills such as humility empathy you are able to relate to others not just wanting people to act as machines um that means you want to say oh i want by this deadline this things this thing this 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 and that happens but maybe that per that particular person is going through a challenging time in their life maybe they've lost a loved one they aren't feeling well they have been sick what do you do as a leader even if you want that person to bring out the results that you want them to do but they're not able to in their time of low times so what do you do you relate to them on a one on one basis and that requires a vulnerability of you as well you have to be able to expose certain parts of yourself that means you are able to relate to that particular person um and you greet them or oh, how are the kids how is life going i um, mean if, if they tell you oh this isn't going on well for me see and truly how best you can help them because this is one thing i say about human beings humans you can't fake you can't fake anything to a human being you can't fake love or fake kindness someone who is the grasp it and that's why i say it requires vulnerability because you'll be able the person will be able to genuinely say oh this person actually does care for me or have i taken my meds you check up on people you do all of these things that's also another way of being an effective leader 
you relate to others as human beings and not just as your junior or as a supervisor because you want a particular promotion. No, I'll say this in one of the things that um, um, helped me grow as a leader was if there is a problem, generally I see that there is a problem and this takes me to my next point which is being also a problem solver. If there is a problem, I would generally take up that problem and take it as my own to say, or maybe in my department there's this particular thing that is lacking. I will take out the work, even if it's not in line with my job description or job duties, I will take up the role. And I will say, um, how best do you want me to do this particular thing? And maybe my supervisor will guide me on it, but I'll make sure I deliver. And it won't be for anything, but just being generally concerned to say, there's no one picking up this stack, I should be able to do so. And in that way, it will really show you that you're a true leader because you are relating to certain things. You are seeing there's a problem, you're finding solutions, even if it doesn't bring you any sort of benefit at that particular at, at that particular time. So those are some of the things that I can say are, are keys to being an effective leader. There are a number of them, but I can say for us, for me, generally these are the ones that i have worked on and i think i'll just add on to say one more which is continuous learning i am a lover for self-continuous learning self-continuous learning to mean that i will pick up a book on my own it doesn't have to be something that is work related i'll read something up i will you know um maybe be associated with people or groups that I can learn something from them and maybe they can learn something from me as well. So constantly learning from others and from different situations. As of right now, I am on holiday because um, schools have closed. Um, I have pretty much two months to, to stay. I can use that two months to do other things, but I said, okay, you know what, let me use this time to learn up sign language because I have always wanted to learn how to sign. So making sure that I utilize the time that I have now because we don't always, we're not always going to have this time that we have right now. So making sure that continuous learning is a part of your growth and your effectiveness as a leader because whatever you knew maybe two years ago has evolved and has grown to be something bigger now. So everything is, con is constantly changing. So making sure that you are, you are self-taught you don't rely on you know other things to learn but you are on your own to learn so being also a continuous learner um the other thing is how do you overcome challenges that women face in the corporate and leadership space i would say for once being a person who has integrity knowing who you are i've already talked about being self-aware but the greatest is that integrity. I'll say this for maybe a number of women, you are going to face challenges. The challenges are equal. And even if you, you continue to climb up the corporate ladder or climb up to be a leader, you will find yourself in scenarios and situations. Not that you have put yourself in that scenario or situation, but that's just how life tries to test you and see is it are these really your values do you really say you're an honest person do you really say you value uh, this you value commitment or do you want to take the easy way out there is the life will have you with an easy route where you see for sure that okay maybe i really wanted to do this i really need to do this and maybe there is this person there's this man telling you you know what if you need this i can do this for you don't worry you and me can just be friends but you know in instance when that person means we can just be friends it comes with the particular package so it will life will present you with those particular scenarios where you have to now say no this is not who i am if i if it means i have to wait then i'll have to wait if it means you know, I will be labeled other things, that's okay with me, but I'm not going to skip solo and reduce myself to become something that I am not. So the greatest thing that has kept me to where I am, I am happy and content, proud to say that 
I have life has tested me with parts where I had to prove that this these are my values and I stick I stuck to those values. So the greatest of, of them all is having integrity doing the right thing even when no one is watching you don't have anyone applauding you to say oh you didn't take that money oh you didn't sleep with this man for this oh you didn't do this no you still do that right thing because that is who you are no it doesn't have to mean that your parents have to know you just continue with life but in the end i'll say life will always have a way of rewarding the choices that we make we are a product of the life choices that we make so um those challenges is um i would say one of the ways in which we can um make sure that we are not having any challenges or we are putting ourselves in a place where we overcome challenges is simply just being who you are knowing your values and sticking to them the other thing i'd say is have mentors have people in your life that can when you are not so sure of whatever decision you, ha you have to make and this i'll say have the right mentors and for my life i have strategically said or understood that i'll have mentors in different um seasons of my life and that's okay that means the mentor that i had maybe um before i got my masters is a different mentor that i have now in this particular position that i am i'd say there was a time where i couldn't choose on what master's degree i want to do and by then that was like the most difficult decision i had to do and choose it it required me to ask people around people who have been in the academia and know am i making the right decision what type of masters should i go for i did this undergraduate degree um these are my plans do you think this is gonna work and all of that i had to seek counsel i got the right counsel because i i sought for people who could really inspire me and challenge me and tell me this is the right path to, to take without them i truly honestly think i would have made the wrong decision and that's how most people like to live their lives thinking they're always going to be right when there have been people who have moved in your pathway who have done um the things that you have done already so you don't have to suffer they've already suffered for you so that you don't have to suffer so have mentors in different capacity that means spiritually i have different mentors the same mentors that are my mentors spiritually not the same mentors that are my mentors financial and when i speak about mentors people usually think it's maybe everyone that you have to talk to and say oh these are my problems this is what i want to do no there are people that you can look up to, follow what they say. Oh, I think this is what I want to, to do, you know. Even for marriage, I have people that I watch the same ones. I listen to what they have to say on marriage and I say, okay, I think this is the right way that I need to do. And once in a while, if I have one or two questions, I go to other people that I can ask them. So have mentors in your life that will help you making decisions. Um so that's that's also another thing have mentors which are seasonal that will inspire you that will help you and do all of those things um the other one is the other i want to see if i'm still on time <laughs> okay the last one i'd say and how you can overcome challenges is having the right company this is in line with being um that is having good mentors but having the right company is also essential because if you have people that are going in the same direction as you it will be really really easy for you to discuss the challenges that you're going through together um of course there's a thing that says a problem half shared is have is almost solved yeah as much as it's it's kind of useless but it makes sense in a way to say that if two of you are going in the same direction you are most likely to help each other and say oh i think there's an obstacle here what am i supposed to do and you work it out together so have people in your life or in your circle that are more like doing this stuff and, the, and i don't mean this in a way that um you know other people try to segregate and say oh i i think i only I, I only need friends who are working right now i only need friends maybe who have 
this financial income and all of that i don't mean it that way i mean it in a way which your closest friends should be the people that you know these are my goals this is this is the vision that i have for my life this is what i want to become and they you are able to keep in each other in check you know you're able to to say oh have you done any project for your organization this year and you're, you're like no i don't think i did but i'm having this particular troubles and they can help you through those type of things um the other one is acquiring more knowledge um in order to enhance your your business or your oh your business performance and success knowledge is truly power and as someone who is really passionate about education and passionate about continuous learning i truly um, believe that we have to strive to know more the more you know the more you do the less you know ignorant is not bliss because the less you know you only do to the capacity that you know but if you know more you are truly going to be um, inspired and challenged to know that I think by now I should be able to do this A, B, C, D, and that. So um, I think none of us should should not be happy with not knowing. If there is something that you don't know, take up um, a book. Even better, take up you know videos on YouTube on that particular topic. There are thousands of things that I have self taught myself without having to to ask for other people it's a numerous and even in my line of work it's just inevitable you just have to make sure that the certain things that you know because by the time you're going to class maybe the things that i learned i don't think they're relevant to me right now i have to you know learn and um make sure that i understand because my success truly depends on it there'll be meetings that i have to go to and we are discussing about you know things that are in line with the world let's say they're talking about the shooting a champ and you don't know anything that even in america those things that will affect you in one way or another you don't know what it means that it's for the forward devaluation in malawi you just simply know the terms but you can't really adapt to what does these terms mean so this will be in line with being in innovative you are self-taught you teach yourself you make time you manage your time well and you know that by this time i need to do a b c d i need to do all of this and you fulfill all those things so having also a checklist is also important checking through your life and seeing even for a week a week i don't know i don't think there is a week that i don't go by without writing this is what i want to achieve in this week and then day i write down this is what i want to do in a day you know and I'll, I'll make sure by the end i'll tick 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 and see what what was i supposed to do in this particular day okay i did this i didn't do this maybe next time i can do better and one last thing i would say is keeping your mind and body fit this is very very important i feel like a lot of people try to overload themselves with different types of work just overloading your mind with oh i've done this i've done this but you can't really focus so making sure that you have a fit mind and a fit body and the fit body i don't mean like having a six pack and all but i have noticed that when my body is in, is fit or healthy i am able to process certain things better in my mind so that means for that particular week maybe i will for that particular day rather i'll spend time in the gym or i'll go for aerobics i'll go for a jog it will truly help me in the way i'll process things and the way i'll do certain things so it's not just a matter of um i will i i want to maybe grow muscles no it's really the more you think about exercise the more you think about it as a mind thing that it does to you it will help you process things better your day will be better because of you know the hormones that are released when you're working out they're in line with happiness you're able to perform better and do better so taking care of yourself as well is also an important way in which it can help in your business performance i think with those remarks 
I should be I should be done. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Soko. Thank you so much for sharing. And I'll give this time to Mr. Prince Ifo. Thank you so much for for the opportunity. So I, I'd like to first thank um, um, my brother Toko, who I believe is a co-founder for this initiative for lending me the opportunity to be here and to share my, my little experience with you all and what we have done and what we continue to do in terms of leadership development and um, building strategic partnerships. Uh, from the email I received for, for this invite, I, I, I had learned that the topic of discussion was leveraging strategic partnerships for organizational growth and men in leadership space, men and women in leadership space. Let me begin with the quotes from um, somebody I love so much in Japan, who was a Taisho period writer, uh, Ryonosuke Satoru. He said something, individually, we are one drop, but together, we are an ocean. So as one person, you are just one drop, right? But when you strategize or you collaborate with others, you become an ocean. This is a driving principle or a driving um, phrase in my life. And um, this would lead me then to explain who I am and how this quote is really forming the basis for who I really am and what I continue to do for Africa and for the rest of the world, for the young people in Africa and for the rest of the world. My name is Prince, Prince um, Ifo, I am the founder and the president of the Young African Leaders Forum. So uh, many people call it YAF, Young African Leaders Forum, YAF, which is the acronym for my organization. My organization um, is um, built on the principles of um, collaboration amongst young people from different African countries and even outside of Africa to create a sustained, um, a sustainable community or sustained communities in different African nations and also to empower young people in different areas to build the Africa we want. We have continued to um, work together in synergy. And um, this synergy is what I like to describe as, um, if you ask me, so I believe that partnerships come in two forms, two major forms. So you have partnerships in terms of collaborations and you have partnership in terms of sponsorships. So partnerships in terms of collaborations would come in the form, and that's what we are doing in my organize, in the organization that we work with, Young African Leaders Forum, where we work with young people from different African nations. We, um, we carry out projects, um, empowerment projects that empower young people. We do lots of things that make and provide platforms for young people to get empowered so that they can represent their own needs first off and then they are able to then go ahead to represent the needs of others around them i am the founder of yaf as i have said and i am also currently a researcher um, at Kennesaw state university in um, atlanta georgia united states where i'm currently working on a short research with some um, faculty members but now i've said that to say that if one is built on leveraging partnerships and um, promoting organizational growth, I always believe that partnerships and strategic partnerships is important. Like I have said earlier, there are two forms of partnership that I would like to begin with. So the first is collaboration, and I would like to call that technical partnerships. These partnerships necessarily don't, don't have to come with money, don't have to come with um, whatever um financial gains it has but then you see young people come together when we started yaf in 2014 we were eight of us uh, i came up with the idea and i looked for young people in different african nations to say um um okay can we come together this is the vision we want to build an africa we want to contribute to building an africa that we can all be proud of now the african union came up with something that was called the agenda 2063 vision plan and 
as young people, we want to stand with them. We want to also contribute to this goal and create an organization that will be Pan-African, that has a short-term goal of 10 years, and we just completed our 10th anniversary, or we are just completing our 10th anniversary in 2024. And so it has another goal for 20 years, and then has another goal for 30 years when we hope to be influencing policies, be creating political leaders in different African nations, where we hope to have a political, a Pan-African political party where we can um, set up young people and put them in strategic position of power. But for the first 10 years, this is what we'll be doing. For the first 20 years, this is what we'll be doing. And for the first 30 years, then we are in better position to shape in all these things. Now, these technical partnerships come up and then we begin to collaborate amongst ourselves as young people. So you share ideas, you share skills, you share innovate, innovations, you share strategies. You share concept and then you are able to make that happen. You can also build technical partnerships with other organizations. I'm saying that because anybody here can work out something without a dime. When, when we started here, there was no dime anywhere, but we started it with technical partnerships, with collaborations, we leverage strategic partnerships, and it built our <laughs> And it built our organization from what we, from where we were, right, to where we currently are. Then at some point in 2015, we got connected with the African Union, and then we've been in strong partnership with the African Union in 2015, since 2015, even till date. Then the second kind of partnership is financial partnership, and that's where most people really look into. So they look for sponsorship, they look for financial partnerships and everything. So these are the two ways uh, one could leverage strategic partnership to build organizational growth. So if you're a young person here and you have a business idea and everything, and then you are looking for good ways to start up and everything, the first point first is usually not about money. And then before even people begin to put up money into your programs or put up money into what you believe and everything, they want to see you drive something from the bear. And then for you to be able to drive something from the bear, you need to understand how to leverage technical partnerships, strategic partnerships in terms of collaborations. And then when we started this organization, like I I said we had member African countries, and then before you knew it, we spread up into 24 African nations. Before you knew it, we spread up into 28 African nations and having members in different parts of the world. I mean, now it's just almost everywhere, and then we are still building. And the goal is to eventually cover all 55 nations of, of, of the African continent and then to also expand even beyond that. So now that's about leveraging technical partnerships. And so technical Partnerships are important, whether technical or sponsorship, that in terms of collaborations or financial partnerships, partnerships are way, way important. Then I look into the next, um, um, the next session of the topic, which is men in leadership space. Men in leadership space. Let me begin with saying a leader for me, is somebody who inspires. A leader, now you would never be a leader if there, if there are no, I don't like to call them followers. I like to call them comrades. If you don't have comrades or you don't have a group of people where that you are working with, you would never be a leader. So a leader is, a, is someone who inspires a group of people to achieve a collective goal. So you come together with a group of people and you're saying, this is what we want to achieve and this is what we should move towards achieving. Every time I talk about leadership, there are two basic skills or basic qualities, not skills now, but basic qualities that I always look out for in leadership. Two, and I can tell you categorically, and you can quote me anywhere, that one of the major problems of Africa today is because these two have never been found in one leader on the continent. Except before... Um, during the nationalistic movement when we had independence fighters and the rest of them. But then the world or the Western world saw that we had some of these corrosive leaders and then they wiped them out. And so that's what we're trying to do through YAF to build a new generation of radical leaders for the continent that can now be positioned in different African nations and driving change from strategic places. Now, these two qualities, like I said, most times you find one in an African leader. And even with one, the leader strives so much. 
But the best leader or the ideal leader for the continent and the ideal leader for me would be a leader that is characterized by character, number one, and competence, number two. What is character? A leader with character is a leader that exudes strong, that has strong moral compass and a leader that is a person driven with strong integrity. A person who can tell you good morning and you look from the window and you really see that it is really morning. A man who will do what he says and not do what he has not said. And who will say what he would do. Integrity or character in leadership is today in Africa really lacking. Many African leaders lack character. And so character makes you considerate to others. Character makes you empathetic. You are empathetic. And I like the fact that I always believe that if a leader is not empathetic, such a leader is really not, I mean, without empathy, I don't believe you are a leader. So I always believe that empathy, when, when, we, come, when we talk about character, it, 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 it consists of moral compass, it consists of integrity, it consists of empathy, it consists of being considerate of people around you. So you have that, I mean, you are just right. You, you, you just know what is right, what is generally acceptable as right and wrong, and you are able to stand by doing right, even if it costs you your life. Even if, and that's why we have men like Thomas Sankara who have died because they stood strong on what they believed. They were going to say, no, this is what we stand for. This is what we believe as Africans. And if we don't do this, if you ask us not to do this, we don't want to do something else. So you find all these people that died, Patrice Lumumba, um, all these Julius Nyerere, the nationalist founders, like I have said earlier on, were leaders that were characterized by strong impute of character character. That's the first point. So character is always a very important part, if you ask me, in leadership. Then the second point is competence. A leader who is not competent is not a leader that I want to follow. I'm talking from my own perspective. Many years ago, I was in a group or led within a group, and then I felt that the group and the leadership in the group is really not exuding com competence. And I said, no, I, re I really would not commit myself into the hands of somebody that I'm not citing competence from. And what do I mean by that? Competence is intelligence. Competence is being visionary. A leader has to really show that you are a leader. You have to be um, ahead in terms of intelligence, not... Uh, in a competitive manner, but I'm saying that in terms of understanding what you guys ought to do. Um, okay, so somebody spoke about, I think the first um, speaker spoke about um, the fact that this is coming from a biblical perspective, and I really um, would um, um, be pleased if I can share one or two biblical perspectives here while we proceed, because I'm also a very strong Christian. And so I'd like to say that competence in this sense is acting like the sons of Issachar in the Bible. The Bible describes the sons of Issachar as children who understand what Israel ought to be doing, when they ought to be doing it, and how they ought to be. So they were ahead of every other Israelite when it comes to understanding of the times. So that's what I call competence. A leader that is, I mean, for you to be a leader, you have to develop yourself you have to be visionary. You have to know what exactly you are driving. You have to know how exactly you want your people to go with you and drive this thing. You have to build the ideas of, with, together with your people, share the ideas, make everybody buy into the ideas. And that's where inspiration comes into. When you bring an idea and you say, this is the idea. What do you guys think? And then you are able, through charisma, to bring your people into getting the same spirit of ownership of that vision with you. And then you all drive the vision together. So that's competence. So you, if you are, I mean, and, and then to develop that kind of competence in terms of intelligence, in terms of everything, of course, you need to be a competitive 
uh, I say, you, you need to be a continuous, not competitive now. You need to be a continuous learner. Life learning, I mean, as long as you live, right, you have to just continue learning. I always believe that learning, as long as one is still breathing, you have to continue learning. In the Bible, there is no Hebrew word for retirement, right? And why is that? The Bible does not have any space for the word retirement. And why is that? Because as long as you are breathing, you are supposed to still be learning. You are supposed to, to still be producing something. Now, this is key when it comes to competence. Because as a leader, you have to be competent. As a leader, you have to continuously learn. You have to be able to effectively communicate with people around you. You have to be futuristic. You have to be visionary. So, in a nutshell, character and competence are the two very qualities that make up ideal leadership for me. Now, the problem with Africa all these years is that we have had leaders who only have competence and don't have character. They are intelligent, they are visionary, but then they lack character. And then you see them doing nasty things, you see them compromising because of what they want to do, you see them living below the standard, um, the moral standard of going below integrity, doing lots of things just to get something because they wanted to do something. Or we have leaders who are only characterized by character. They have integrity and everything, but they are not so competent. They are not intelligent. I mean, they are not the kind of visionary leaders you need. But I'm saying that, and this is my belief, that between now and the next 20 or 30 years, I can see that in many African nations, we would have leaders that are characterized by these two qualities, character and competence. And when we have leaders who are characterized by character and competence, then it becomes the kind of, we would then get to a point where we can create the Africa we want. And I really uh, invite everybody to go read up on that if you have not uh, about the agenda 2063 of the African Union and the plan to get Africa to a more global height by 2063. And that's what we are working with in our organization, Young African Leaders Forum. And we continue to move and progress in, in, in making sure that young people in, in all parts of the world and um, in all part of Africa are into so that they can ensure that they contribute to making Africa great again. So character and competence are the two key things for leadership. And then collaborations and sponsorships are the best ways to leverage strategic partnerships. I would end with a story with um, about um, um, my my reading my my reading habit, right? So I, I like to read, and I like to read, um, especially when I want to go to bed. So before I go to bed, I have a book on my bed. There's usually a book on my bed, so I just probably read and then meditate and then sleep. So that's what I do. So my my twelve year old son is also uh, has also developed that attribute. In the sense that, okay, so in the sense that he reads and then sometimes he forgets to turn off the light and then he's off to bed. And so the mom most times will come in to their room to say, no, why, why did you leave your light on? Or why did you leave the torch light on? And then you wasted the battery or you killed the stuff and everything. And then when the complaint begins, I just laugh and say, oh, this is a very, is it terrible? Is it good? <laughs> but this is an but this is an attitude that this boy has gotten from me. But I do think it's a good attitude because even though it has some negative um, um, results, but uh, like the leaving of the light on at night before sleeping, unlike me, I'd really be self-aware and I'll turn off the light before I go to bed. But he's not so mature yet as to be self-aware to know when he wants to sleep and then go ahead to turn off the light. But why am I saying this? I'm saying this because every leader or every supposed leader needs to be an aspiring reader leaders are readers and readers are leaders so you cannot claim to want to be a leader or to aspire to be a leader when you are not reading and you cannot be reading consistently and not be a leader now it doesn't matter what now it depends on the area where you want to really go into and when i talk about reading i read lots of things and i read spiritual books especially now so you read 
And if you want to be a leader in the spiritual realm or in the spiritual um, um, facets, you read. If you want to be a leader in the political realms, you read political stuff. If you want to be a leader in global things, you read global stuff. In entrepreneurship, you read entrepreneurial stuff. You sharpen yourself. You attend conferences. You do a lot of things to develop yourself. Don't sit somewhere and just want to become a leader. No. Leaders have to be leaders that develop character and competence. I discovered this when I was making my final year undergraduate research in, um, in 20, 2011. And since that time, I had run with this vision, trying to make sure that we, as an organization, Young African Leaders Forum, are building character and building competence in every young person that we find. Today, I can categorically say that we have touched and directly empowered directly impacted and empowered over 120,000 young people according to our database and that was like the ones we looked at in 2022 but if we look at it now plus the outbreak of covid plus everything and the digital impact that we are currently making we should have done more and then what are we doing in essence we are now building a chain of radical leaders who will then emerge tomorrow and then become global leaders and then become we currently have some people who are currently in political positions they left here and they are currently occupying political positions and are still in constant communication with us and then still understand what our goals are for 2024 and when we are about to float a global political party for africa or a pan-african political party and then they know what roles they are going to play it's more like building a very strong future and building a chain of leadership through strategic partnership so whether it be strategic partnership whether it be organizational growth or whether it be leadership in all collaboration is needed and i think i would end here thank you thank you so much sir. really appreciate uh, for sharing such insightful knowledge so now we're gonna enter into our next phase which is the panel discussion unfortunately or fortunately they have already answered most of my questions but i'm still going to ask the ones that haven't yet been answered and if you have questions you can also type them in the chat box so i'd like to ask mr e uh, as he has explained to us more about the Young Leaders Forum, could you also please enlighten us on the Southern African Youth Summit? Okay, thank you so much. So, um, like I said, we we are uh, we are an organization that is committed to empowering a new generation of, of African leaders, and we currently are still working on that. And it's our goal to work on that continuously. And whatever we are doing now is really not about now, it's about the future. And so we are building a chain or a network of radical leaders to impact Africa's future. This year by October will be 10, and we are having what we call the um, um, anniversary celebrations, right? The 10th anniversary celebration. And now to mark that anniversary celebration, we are hosting conferences in five regions. Sorry. We are hosting conferences in five regions. First, we are hosting in Lagos, Nigeria, and it is the West African Leaders Summit for all young people in West Africa. Second, we are hosting in Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya, the Eastern African Youth Summit for all youths and youth leaders in East Africa. Then we are hosting the um, Northern African Youth Summit in Rabat, Morocco, for young people in Rabat, in Morocco and neighboring states, it was supposed to be in Sudan, but because of the current civil war happening in Sudan, we had to move it to Morocco, whereas we are still providing humanitarian aid in Sudan and trying to help to alleviate the poverty of some of the people as much or as little as we can. Now, so that's what we do in Sudan and in North Africa. Then we have what we call our journal, the um, Young African Leaders Journal of Development. It's a journal that we have published since 2016 in partnership with the African Union. And we, part and we publish this journal every two years. So the next 
edition. So we started in 2016, then we have another edition in 2018, then we had another edition in 2020, the year of COVID, then we had another edition in 2022, then we are having the fifth edition in 2024. And all through this, these uh, publications, we have been working with the African Union. So we are publishing this fifth edition with the African Union here in Washington, D.C., in the United States, uh, because the African Union has a mission here. Then we have the Southern African Youth Summit. And um, um, the co-founder for this ACT version is my very own um, good brother, Toko and Thiko, um, and some other um, comrades of mine in Southern Africa are the leaders of that summit in, um, uh, in Southern Africa. They are the ones driving the initiative in Southern Africa. So what's the goal? The goal is to empower all young people in Southern Africa. So if you are in Malawi, Zimbabwe, Nairobi, um, Zimbabwe, uh, Namibia, um, and all these Southern African nations, we invite you to join the Southern African Youth Summit or attend the Southern African Youth Summit, which would hold, I think, in November um, in um, um, Lusaka, Zambia. So we are currently finalizing plans with strategic partners there, like I told you, through technical partnerships, through sponsorships. We are trying to make the summit a very strong one in uh, Nairobi, uh, in, not Nairobi now, in Lusaka, Sorry, I have many, many African um, states on my head. Uh, in Lusaka, Zambia, we are trying to make that strategic partnership work. So the Southern African Youth Summit is to empower young people in Southern Africa. So I want to assume that people here are from Malawi or from other African um, um, Southern African nations. Please, we invite you to um, um, get ready to join us. I do not think that they had opened the registration portal yet because they want to get some things done before opening up the registration portal. But the registration portal will be opened up sometime in August, or yeah, sometime in August, and then everybody will be invited to attend the event. So that's about the Southern African Youth Summit and every other thing that we are doing across the continent. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for the invite. We will definitely register and be there. And now going to Mrs. Soko, can you tell us more about the founding of the Kuala Christian Organization? We would love to know what really motivated you to open this organization. All right, thank you very much. So I was a student by then, doing my undergraduate studies in John the Baptist University in Manguji. I saw a need of young girls, um, I'll meet them maybe as I was going to have my lunch, um, coming back from school, but some of them are barefoot and just, you know, asking them questions about how the school is going. And they'll say, oh, school is going okay, but we don't have the resources, we don't have notebooks, we don't have pencils, pens, etc. all of those things. So it would always break my heart to see them not you know having the full joy and capacity to work hard in school because they're lacking just those basics you know so i thought it was you know what let me just try with the pocket money that i have to give them at least some notebooks some pens some pencils and whatnot so i mobilized some of my friends and with the money that i had we bought a number of things and went to the school, you know, but I saw a bigger need. I saw a bigger need in terms of they just didn't want the materials. They wanted help. Inspiration. So I just had to make sure to go there again and again. So it just became a habit where I would visit them often. And then it moved on to orphanages. It moved on to the hospitals and all of those, but the seed that had started that was my need for seeing young girls doing better. And I thought I was a voice that could actually help into this particular time where I could actually tell them, this is how you can live life and do all of these things. And some of the things were really simple. I think maybe this is what everyone else can know. I'm sure this is home basic training, but you you'd think and know that not everyone else has gone through the home basic training that maybe some people have. So it went on and on. So currently we're still in contact with 
a, an orphanage in Blanda. That's the one that we like to work close hand in hand with. So I go there often, um, do a number of work, um, check that the school reports are coming in nicely. Um, where possible, we give in um, different resources, foodstuffs, or sometimes we just cook lunch, go there, eat with them, discuss certain things about life, what challenges they're facing. If there are boy issues, uh, we we'll talk to them about it. So it has been ongoing like that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, now coming to Mr. Ifo, uh, especially now that you have told us about the summits in West African, East Africa, Northern and Southern, like, um, can you tell us about the challenges and mitigate risk associated with strategic uh, partnership when it comes to organizing these summits? Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, uh, like, like it is everywhere, you will always face challenges. You will always face challenges. Challenges are, are normal everywhere. And again, I'll ask that I be permitted to use a Bible quote. I'm so sorry because then I I, I, I am governed by, by the scriptures. That's, that's my life. I'm governed by the scriptures. So there's something the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10. Um, there is no temptation or no challenge that is such as is common to man, but God is able to he will not suffer you to be tempted or to be challenged above something that you are able to bear. So no matter the challenge, right, in pursuing your goal, no matter the challenge, just know that God knows that you have the capacity to overcome it, right? You have the capacity to withstand it and to even do better. So when I see challenges, and there are going to be challenges when you approach people for technical partnerships, technical, you don't want money. Okay, you have a hall. Can you work with us with your hall? And then we will get other things. And then some people will be like, no, it, it, it shouldn't cast you down. It shouldn't cost you. I mean, people will say, people will talk down your dreams. People will talk down your ideologies. People will look down on you. It, it shouldn't bother you. It, it shouldn't really bother you. What should matter to you, especially, is you believing in yourself and then you understanding that God is also rooting for you. So if you have these two ideologies, I mean, many years ago, the Lord taught me that. He said, see, if, if you want to go find life, there are two things you must never forget. One, you must have confidence in yourself. That's the first thing. Then second thing is that you must know that I'm rooting for you. And then you believe, which is like having faith in God. You believe that I am with you because I'm rooting for you. So if you have this, so no matter what happens, people can reject you. There are going to be challenges. We are currently having lots of people saying, I mean, even while we are planning these programs everywhere, there are people who are talking us down, but it's, I'm looking beyond them. I already saw that they were going to talk us down. And so you're looking beyond that. You are planning for the bigger picture. You are going beyond whatever they think, because at the end, at the end, we know that all these things would really happen. And so that's the thing. So the, the, the idea is even when these challenges come, don't stop. Just keep pushing. Abraham Lincoln tried many times, many times, many times. Eventually, he became a president. And even when he became a president, what happened? He was assassinated and he died. He didn't even finish his reign. But he was one of the greatest presidents that America ever had. So you cannot give up. If you look at Elon Musk today in the United States, he's really, really celebrated. I mean, if you look at... Um, the Tesla cars. I mean, I really envy them and I'm, I'm really hoping that I can get one for myself very soon as well. The Tesla cars are out of this world. But this is the same mosque that was rejected many times and everything. So if you look at Bill Gates, you will see how that he, he was younger and people talked him out. His teachers talked him out. Nobody believed in him. But you cannot allow what people are saying about you to kill your own personal conviction about who you are and about where you are going. So, and that's one thing that has guided me all across. I have people who we work together with, my comrades. And like, again, I, I said, I don't like to call them followers. <laughs> Nobody's following anybody. We are all leading together. We are comrades. So I call them comrades or brothers and sisters. And so most times across the continent, we have discussions. I receive phone calls and they say, hey, Prince, guess what? It's a bad news from these guys. And then they are saying that they wouldn't do this. And I'm like, okay, no worries. What's the next step? Do we have another person? Go to plan B. Forget it. Just go to plan B. And then after some time, you just hear to say, okay, Prince, they even called us back and said we should come back. They are ready to accept us. And I'm like, no, they rejected us. We are not going back. We don't go back to our vomit. Just go back and, I mean, just go ahead and continue to do what you're supposed to do. So, and then at the end of the day, they just realized that people that should have partnered with you when they, be, they didn't believe in you when you really did not have it, right? Or when you did not show the potential that you had it. 
And then when they eventually see that, oh, this really works, they can then start cheering you up. Now, and that's the thing about doing all these things. You have to just be resolute. You have to be resolute. There is no, there is no way to overemphasize the importance of being resolute in everything you do. Of being resolute. So, I mean, even somebody says something, and I always laugh when I hear that. Even your own neighbor, your cousins, your brother, your cousins, some of your relatives don't even believe in you. They don't believe in the thing that you can do or become in life. But guess what? When you eventually become that person in life, everybody be like, ah, it's my brother. Ah, he did it. I knew he was always going to do it. So they only know that you were going to do it. And then you eventually did it because at some point you decided to yourself, you would not stop. So I got to a point where I told myself, even if it means me and only 10 people, as long as there are 10 committed people driving this vision for Africa, we will surely get to where we will get to. But thank God he's continuing to bless the vision with many young people from different areas, radical leaders like um, you see Toko here and so many other people that are in different African nations working with us. We are working together, trying to build this chain of that. And everybody's doing what they do. See, Toko is running his own act versions and many other people are doing what they are doing in different strategic areas. But at the end of the day, I'm also doing my own separate thing. So YAF is not like one person's thing. It's like where everybody comes together to say, okay, so this is the African headquarters for young people. What do we do here? And then when we do what we want to do here, we still go back to our private things and then we do our private things and run our private issues and everything. So that's the thing. So when there are, when the challenges emerge, and I'm not saying that there are not going to be challenges, I'm saying there will be challenges, but you need to learn to look beyond the challenge. Expect challenges, expect it, and then have an alternative. If the challenge comes, what is the next thing that I'll do? If they say no to my proposal, to my proposal, what do I do next? So, and then you plan your stuff. So it, it, it's just having that goal, having that focus and staying strong, knowing that God, God, if God gave you a vision, and that's another thing that I always talk about. Um, I don't like driving visions that are not given by God. If it is God that has notched you with that vision, and I think everybody has something that God is, has rooted them for on earth, uh, because God did not create anybody without a purpose. So the only thing is that many people, I would really say that 70% of the people that are on earth today don't even know what God's original plan for their lives are. So, but as long as you discover what God's plan is for your life and then you are able to walk in that direction, you might face challenges. But at the end, the dream will be true. And at the end, the vision will speak. It says, Write it down. It will speak. It says, though it may tarry, but just stay consistent. It will speak. So the vision will speak. If it is God that not should be done, and you are not doing this because you are competing with somebody else. You are not doing this because you are aiming to um, eat money. I think two or three days ago, we had a mission. We had a, uh, I hope I'm not talking too much, but two or three days ago, we had a meeting with some people I don't remember if it's in Zambia or in Morocco. And then when we finished talking, they were like asking me that, okay, Prince, this is outside the, of, of the discussion. So how much do you make from all of this? And I'm like, that's a wrong question to ask me. I'm not doing this because of money. I'm doing this because I want to impact Africa. The money would come, I know. It would come. And then when it comes, we would all enjoy and celebrate it together. But this is not my driving goal. So if you are doing something because of money alone, then you are wrong. That's the first point of being wrong. You must do something because you want to impact others, because you want to benefit others, you want to improve the lives of others. Then the money will follow. The provision will always follow the vision. So follow the vision, stand the challenges. I like to say man up, man up. No matter what you are going through, man up. Do things to impact others and then every other thing will work in your favor, even the money. The money will come. So look at everybody that's providing. I mean, I talked, I spoke about Elon Musk and all the rest of them. If you see the services they provide here, it's just out of this world. And then they are serving the they are serving the benefit or the, the, the well-being of others. And then they are making their money from it. Today is one of the greatest persons or greatest or richest persons on earth. And that's because he's serving a need. So look for a need and serve. Don't do something because of money. Don't pursue money. Pursue a need. Sometimes it takes 10 years. To build a partnership that would or build a relationship 
that would benefit you for years to come. And that's what I always, and I think I should share this. I should share this. Try as much as possible not to disconnect or not to sour any relationship that you are into. I try as much as possible in that direction. I had worked in London at some point when I finished school in 2011. I came out with my undergraduate degree. I worked for two companies in London um, and they were journalistic companies. One was a Nigerian, then the other one was just normal Brits. But then, even for the Brits, I had no problem. But for the Nigerian, I had lots of problems. But when I was going to leave him, I made sure that I left him in a very good way, keeping the relationship. Even though he treated me badly, I kept the relationship. And then today, the relationship is paying off. He's, today is one of the board members on the Young African Leaders Forums um, 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 on our um forum and so it's like that so try to keep relationship no matter what happens try to build relationships build quality relationships don't overlook or downplay any relationship that you are currently in now today the person might look like a nobody <laughs> but tomorrow that person might become the the lifeline you need for where god is taking you so build quality relationship and maintain good relationship by good attitude so no matter the challenge just know that your own role is to continue to press and if you can press god will bring you through so that's 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 my that's my point in that regards thank you thank you so much uh last but not least mrs soko you spoke about uh one of the qualities of an effective leader and one of them being empathy uh, can you share with us um, what role does emotional intelligence intelligence play in leadership and how can leaders develop it? Okay, so as a leader, you certainly need um empathy or you need to relate well with others because you're dealing with people and dealing with people requires you to be vulnerable as i already stated you need to know how best you can talk to another person how best you can also manage your own emotions and control them this comes in line to say um let's say that day you had a really bad day and this is coming from your house yeah you had a really bad day let's say maybe for instance i had a bad day with um the people that i am around with at at, at home but i have to report to work whatever emotions um that way may be disturbing me at home shouldn't relate to what's at home what's at work that means I, I don't have to treat other people badly at work because i had a bad day at home you have to make sure that you wear your hats differently that means at home you can be a mother or i can be a wife um i can be you know a head of department this side or even as i speak about the young girls that are impact it's not when they see me i don't think they see me as a leader they see me as their elder sister that's usually the relationship that i have with them yeah i go to them as a as their elder sister and i go to them we tell me the problems that you are, you're facing and uh, maybe this is what you should do and whatnot so you were you will wear different caps or you wear different hats and make sure that in every heart that you wear, you're able to manage your emotions that you have. So you manage how you speak to others. You manage how you even speak to yourself. You manage your control, the feelings that you are meant to have. So it's very, very essential for you to know how to manage and control your feelings. That's one thing of being or having an emo emotional intelligence. The other thing I would relate to it to say, be someone who is discerning. That means you're able to read the situation and read. Um, in this case, I can't say read, but I would say have that awareness of the situation that is around you. You can't, re you can't react or have all scenario is the same everything can happen at the same that just because maybe yesterday this happened 
and you were able to resolve it in this particular way, it doesn't mean the next person will also appreciate you to do it in that particular way. I mean, in this case, let's say, for example, you have another person where the other people where when they do something that they, they weren't supposed to do, you can tell them on the spot to say, you know what, I don't think this was right to do. Next time, do this work in this particular way. And for another person, you know how they are. You say, okay, find me in my office at this particular time. And then you you relate to them about the vision. You tell them, I think in this particular way, this wasn't supposed to be done in this way. You are treating these two people differently because you're able to discern and read the situation. Just because A worked for this person doesn't mean it will work for, that, for the other person. So having have that discern for spirit where you can discern and know this is what I'm supposed to do at this particular time, or I'm supposed to not do what I did yesterday, but change it up for the day. And then how do you... So lastly, how do you um, develop this emotional intelligence? The other thing that I think, um, I was just echo what Prince already talked about, and that is being a reader. Leaders are readers and readers are leaders, which is true. That's how best you can develop your emotional intelligence. You read up, you know how knowledge, um, how knowledge is power and how that particular knowledge can help you to do and react to certain things in different scenarios. So I can't stress this enough. I think he already stressed that enough to talk about how reading can actually affect or impact the capacity of your brain, your mind, and essentially how you are able to manage those particular emotions. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and lastly, the last question is going to Mr. Ifo. How can leaders balance short-term needs with long-term vision and strategy? All right. Thank you. Yeah, so um, to, to, to do this, I'd really like to start by power priority. You need to prioritize your goals. And then you, use, you, you need to do this using the SMART analogy. I'm sure you know what SMART is, SMART goals. So you do the SMART um, identification and you prioritize. You are able to create that balance between your short-term needs and then your long-term vision by, first off, you bring your long-term vision, like I told you now, our long-term vision is to raise leaders that will be in a place of, I mean, not just politically, but in places of influence across the continent. It, it will take 30 years to do that. That's what I believe. Some people say it will take more, but I told when we were starting this organization, we agreed that, okay, it's going to take 30 years. Let's plan towards 30 years, right? So we are planning towards 30 years and then we are building and then we just got to the first 10 years and we've done lots of work already uh, with minimal funds and now we hope that the next 20 years would even be better and then we would have a better ground and then we are able to do this. But then that's the long-term vision, create leaders, but we are building small uh, gradually. So you have to break down your long-term visions into smaller parts or simple parts and then you are able to manage the short-term task individually and then make sure that you review your progress to ensure that it is still aligning with your long-term goals. If you are not able to balance your short-term your short-term task or your short-term needs with your long-term vision and your long-term goals, then you are breaking off. I'll give you a practical scenario. YAV is founded on the principles of Pan-Africanism. If Africa would ever go great, we need leaders who would understand the need to put Africa first, right? So, and that's where we've had many failed leaders in Africa as well who are prepared to the West. Look at what is happening in Kenya. Look at what's happening in Nigeria. We just have leaders who are puppets to the West. And that's not what we want. We cannot become great like that. So now, Pan-Africanism is at the core of everything we do as, as an organization we have. On numerous occasions, I have had an opportunity to partner, and I mean solid partnerships, with things that would drive me away from this Pan-African goal. And I am saying no. 
to it. Because of this, I lost many of my comrades who left and said, we should just do this. And I'm like, if we do this, we will not be different from what we are trying to change. So we must remain Pan-African. We must remain in our space. If this is what we are trying to do, then we must get to a point where we know that we are standing strong on Africa and we are not breaking pro protocols or um, deviating because compromising because of what we want to get. And that's where character comes in. Character means integrity. This is what I have stand to do and this is what I must do. It doesn't matter what the result is, I stand to do it. So that's the key. So when we have that, we, we realize that, okay, so even now we, we have lots of partnership with American embassies and American corners in different nations. The first time we're going to have a partnership with one of them, it, a discussion arose like that and it wasn't good. And I'm like, no, we can't do this because this is what we want to do. But eventually now we are doing what we want to do with them and they understand our goals. The African Union work with the United Nations and work with other organizations. And then they know that the African Union is first off an African organization and it's Pan-African in nature. So you cannot make it go against Pan-Africanism. So that's the kind of identity we created for ourselves to say, no matter, we can partner with anybody as long as we are achieving our goals. So now we are in a better position. Many organizations know us now and then they are working with us knowing that we cannot drive you or we cannot drive you away from your initial goals. Many people start well, right? But along the line, they deviate from their own goals. They have a long-term goal. But you just see people who started with, and that's why you say, ah, this person did not start like this now. How come? Why is it now different? Because he forgot or along the line, he's not able to balance the short-term needs and the long-term vision. So balancing that short-term needs and long-term vision is something that is very key for me. Very key. And so today I write reference letters at least in a week. I write at least, I, I even have more like an AI assistant now that writes reference letters for me. So in a week, I write at let reference letters at least like five, between four to five reference letters every week to support young people who are doing lots of things or who are going to schools or who are doing anything that they want to do to get um, empowerment. And then I'm like, okay, go. I'm supporting you with this reference letter, right? But don't forget who you are. Don't forget where we are coming from. Don't forget what we want to do for Africa. If all of us decide to say we don't care about whether or not Africa is put first, then it means that we will never create the Africa we want. So we are standing by that. When you are pursuing your long-term goals, or when you are pursuing your long-term goals, you must remember that your short-term visions must be constantly reviewed so that you know that you are still in place, you are still on track to pursue or to meet your long-term visions. So don't do anything that will cause you then to, at, at some point, deviate away from your long-term goals and so that's the thing so if you are a business entrepreneur for instance and you are create and your vision is to become the biggest let's say uh you sell food or to be become the biggest uh you become the what, what's it called what's this guy's called in wendy's wendy's is like a restaurant in the united states here you become the wendy's of malawi for instance you must know that your short-term need at this time, you must continue, at least you wake up early, you do things right, you serve quality. You begin to do things from now on that would give that strong ideology to what you want to do. So you cannot want to become a Wendy's in the future and then you are opening up your restaurant at 11 a.m., you are serving with dirty dishes, you are, your restaurant is dirty, uh, your your attendants are rude and they don't know how to speak. So for whatever you want to do, it has to begin from now. So your short-term needs or your short-term goals or your short-term task must, it's more like a, uh, what's it called? Yes, a puzzle. You are puzzling everything. It's a future. So now I can I can boldly say that we have puzzled the first 10 years of have, And so far, the image or the picture we are creating is looking good. So the next 20 years, we are still puzzling the image is looking good. And then by the end of the 30 years, we believe that when we stand the image, it will become a giant in Africa. And so that's the thing. That's the ideology that we want to have. And um, by 2063, Africa should mm -hmm. have a very strong um, 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 chain of radical leaders who will know themselves. They will surely know themselves in different African nations. So I can be a, um, somebody can be a president in one country and another person is the president in another country and then they know themselves and they speak to themselves and they share the same Pan-African ideas and then we know that we are creating the Africa we want. And that's how all these other nations build to themselves. 
Um, I'm a teacher of history as well, and so I, I, I'm deep in hist history as well. So if I, I read through the history of all these European countries, America and all of them, and I saw that at some point they had this chain of connections. The American Declaration of Independence were written by young people who were thinking radically about the future. And what they thought and wrote about is what America is still, I mean, what they created 200 years ago is what America is still living with, even till today. And that's why you see that even no matter what happens, I, the people say China is going to become world power, right? But I can categorically tell you that not in this life. China will never, they can go close, but America has a very strong foundation that is built. And the only thing that will make them really deviate or, I mean, get out is when they begin to switch sides and then leave, because then again, American foundation was built on gold, right? And then they begin to leave god right and that's when they can deviate and so then at that time god can punish them through enemies but as long as they still stay strong on, on, on the principles of god that they started with i don't think any country can beat them because if we look through their foundations and look through their histories i have studied the histories of many countries in the world and i can tell you that this things that i'm saying are the things that all of them did at some point to get to where they are today we look at them and we say ah they are developed we go there we take pictures we smile and everything and and i'm like we can do this in africa but the leaders in Africa are just crazy leaders, very crazy. The last Nigerian election, I gave up. I gave up on my country, Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian, but I gave up on my country, Nigeria, after the last election. I gave up because the people are not, I mean, the leaders, I mean, even the people, the young people, are not even futuristic enough to understand that we cannot have a good country like this. And I like, the, I like what young people are doing in the... Um, Kenya to show that they are awake and everything. So that's the thing. So whatever you are planning for the future, your day-by-day -day step must count towards that. You want to become a cleaner, start cleaning your room and clean it well, and then start doing everything that you are doing. So that's the step, just step by step, step by step, step by step, and then you are where you are. So America is deviating, like I said, but if Donald Trump comes in back, I believe that they will get back to where they used to be, uh, and then they'll put God first again, and then they are still in, they are still on track. So that's that's the thing. That's the thing. So it's just for you to remember where you started from, where you are aiming to get, and remain consistent doing what you are called to do, whether or not everybody follows you. Many people today are driven by follow, follow. I mean, people are following you. If they don't follow you all. Uh, another thing is people try to get their, you try to get your impression or you try to get your acceptance rate. You measure your acceptance rate by social media likes and social media whatever. So, I mean, those things are really, at some point for like two years, I decided that, okay, this social media stuff is really getting into my head. So, I don't want to measure my success rate or my impact using social media. It's good to have all those things, but you must first remember that even though people are driving these things in the right direction, your direction must not change. You must remain focused. Your long-term goals can be pursued, but you pursue it following steps gradually, gradually. And you make sure that you review every time to see that you're on track. Yes, so that's, that's about starting small and keeping small to meet your final needs. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, this marks the end of today's session, but not the end of exposure to excellence and expertise. I'd like to thank our expert speakers today, Mr. Ifo and Mrs. Queen. It was such a nice time. Thank you so much for the insightful knowledge and sharing with us your wisdom and your life experience. It's such an amazing, we had an amazing time. Thank you so much. And I would really love to appreciate our audience, those who joined from the first day and to this last day. Thank you so much, guys. I believe that we have gained a lot more insight and we are going to apply whatever we have learned uh, in our lives. So thank you so much. Uh, our next sessions, um, we are looking forward to our August session, August session of exposure to excellence and expertise. More information will be communicated through your emails for the next development. So thank you so much and have a blessed night. Thank you.
Sato. Hello. Hello. Can you text Glenna? He should join back. Okay. And you can end the recording.